afternoon to you viewers how are you trust you had a wonderful sunday again this is the church of the nazarene baptist district family forum and uh, we're glad to join you again on cbc tv 8 we appreciate the partnership that cbc um, has with us as we seek to touch lives and of course you know at the top as the title suggests, Family Forum. And uh, today we want to zero in on another area of interest. Um, the specific topic is looking at partnering with parents and teachers for student success. Uh, we agree it's crit critical partnership. Um, and uh, today we have, as usual, my co-host, Reverend Kelman. A very pleasant good afternoon to you, Chelsea Hadden. Beautiful day, and you are relaxing and watching the program. And I hope that you can call a friend or someone special. Let me know that we're on and that there is a, a, a good topic awaiting you. All right, and of course, we are especially pleased to have with us Dr. Ian Marshall with us, an educator. And um, Dr. Marshall, welcome. Thank you, um, Pastor, and good morning to one and all. Good afternoon, sorry, to one and all. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. All right, we get back to Dr. Marshall a little later, but we are truly happy to have him with us in this evening's um, presentation. Again, as I, as I said, we are zeroing in on the whole idea of um, partnering with parents and uh, teachers for student success. And I trust it as we share. Invite your friend, um, even your, your, your students, because we, we are sure to give some tips um, to help your children, whether the children are secondary school or tertiary or even primary. Um, we believe that this even discussion will be of help. Um, at this time, we want to um, begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing in this forum, even as we talk about how parents and teachers can work towards the success of, our, of, this, of the students, we realize it's a, a meaningful partnership, and we ask you will guide us in our discourse this evening. We're grateful to have with us Dr. Marshall, an educator himself, who will help to inform us on this topic. So bless those parents who are listening, and students as well, and those who may be having some issues, even we're hoping that even as we share this evening, to address some of those issues, parent, child, teacher, child, um, even student, student issues as it relates to the success of a student, ultimate success of students in this evening's program. So Lord, we thank you in advance for the influence and leadership you will give to this program, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Okay, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you. Great. I hope you have invited someone to share as we discussed this evening, as I said, partnering with parent and teacher um, for student success. But as I said, as I said to you earlier, we have with us um, Dr. Ian Marshall, an educator for 28 years, uh, a teacher trainer, a leadership development expert um, from 2009 to present. Uh, President, of course, he is a lecturer in educational leadership at UEK Phil. And uh, part of that involves supervising um, MED, MPhil, and PhD students in leadership. He's also an educational consultant, um, training incumbent and prospective. Um, leaders, educational leaders throughout the Caribbean. So he has a big mandate. Of course, Ian is married to Andrea, 
also an educator herself, and he has three children, Abiyomi, Neela, and of course, Delani. Um, three wonderful children, and we thank God for them, of course. It was my pleasure to be their pastor for a number of years. Now, um, in this role, um, the, the new pastor is Pastor Saul, who would have been, would have taken over after me. But I still have a good relationship with Dr. Marshall, uh, which I treasure. Um, Dr. Marshall, over to you. Okay, thank <laughs> you, and good evening again to, to one and all. Um, just to give you a sense of how um, I'm looking at the topic, and essentially what, what we are saying is that parenting and parental involvement is key to student academic success. And if we're going to have our, our students achieving at their optimum, then we need to establish that partnership or that relationship. And to my mind, that is at the core of whatever we do. So through the course of this discussion then, we'll be looking at that and we'll be seeking essentially to get you to understand that even though on, on the surface it might seem like a huge undertaking, I, my, my focus this evening is to ensure that you are empowered to do what you have to do for your children. Thank you. All right. So, um, Dr. Marshall, what, what would you say are some of those key issues? Okay, the, that the, we need to zero in on. Okay, the, the first key issue that I would like to put on the table essentially is that parents sometimes have the view that you, you need to have lots of money, you need to have lots of resources to be able to facilitate the development of your children. Mm -hmm. But I want to suggest that there, there are some very simple, cost effective things that you can do. And I'll give you one example. For example, um, no, no pun intended, of course, mm -hmm. being present. Just being <laughs> present for your children. It can be something as simple as sitting on the kitchen table or in the living room, dining room, wherever you sit, and be beside that child where he or she is doing the homework. Something as simple as just sitting. Mm -hmm. you, may not, you, know, you may not be knowledgeable about the topic or the area, but just being present. You are, you are communicating to that child, you know, what, what you are doing is important to me. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that, that, com that communication then en encourages or motivates the, the, the student or your child or ward to be willing to give of his or her best. And to my mind, that is, a, that is, that is free. You don't have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So that is, the, that is the, the myth we want to, as you say, a myth buster. We want to deal with that up front. That parental involvement does not only mean, let us say, for example, supplementary lessons mm -hmm. or having the latest gadgets, having a, a laptop, having the, the, uh, the other electronic devices and so on. While those may be important, mm -hmm. the research has clearly suggested that those things, while important, are not as important as just the parent being should present. being present. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, that, that is, in other words, that is free. Yeah. You can give that <laughs> freely. You don't have to pay for being present, essentially. How, how does being present differ, let's say, for a primary school child, um, secondary school child, and tertiary child? Uh, do, does being present mean the same? It means the same, mm -hmm. but it is, it is, um, it is operationalized differently, and I'll explain what I mean. Yeah. So for a child at the primary level, for example, being, being physically present mm -hmm. would be important. Yeah. Because if the child is, is having a challenge, or the child is getting frustrated, mm -hmm. even, as I said, if, even if you don't know the material, by, yes. being, by just having that encouraging word and being present, that will work for a primary school child. Mm -hmm. In terms of a secondary school child, mm -hmm. being present might mean that if the, 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 the child or ward has an issue at school, mm -hmm. that you go to represent that child. Yeah. So that is being present. And even at the tertiary level, even though we, we, uh, we assume again, uh, whether rightly or wrongly, yes. that the older they are, the, the less that's they need wisdom. parents, less release them. <laughs> the fact is that even at the tertiary level, yes. th there is a need for parents to be present because mm -hmm. when you are, are the, well, the, the, the child, for example, at that age, let's say 17 or 18, mm -hmm. well, you say, well, I don't really want my parent hovering over me. Yeah. But the reality is that there are some things that you have to negotiate and that, and that requires Yes. an adult to be present. That's right. And, and because the adult is present, that gives that child mm -hmm. confidence that, okay, even if something um, happens, mm -hmm. I know I have my mother, my father's yes. backing, etc. Yes. And that, 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 so being present mm -hmm. is still the same thing. Yes. It's just expressed differently. differently. Uh, but differently. you they have to be present. But I've also heard of 
mm-hmm. uh, situations whereby a parent was step late with a child. Mm-hmm. Step late. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was doing an assignment. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the child really treasures, treasures exactly. that, that presence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That moment, I mean, that even if dropped the seat, the child right, don't mind. That, that don't You're mind. there. Right. That You're there. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Free, free, you know, yes. Um, yes. Well, it's doing my thesis or other cases. Yes. That's mm-hmm. right. And it means a lot to, to, yes. to that, to that yes. child. Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wonderful point, Dr. Um, Marshall, yeah. being present. You want to give another Yes. The, <laughs> the, 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 other, the other tip I will, I will leave on the table as well is showing an interest. In other words, as I said before, it is not about being the expert in all areas. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, if you are a parent, obviously, you, let us say for argument, say you are an accountant. You might know, for example, how to um, direct that child if the child is doing accounting or as the subject of a principles of accounts. Mm-hmm. But if you are, obviously, if the child is doing chemistry, mm-hmm. or if the child is doing, let us say, uh, what? I don't know, industrial arts. So whatever the child is doing, the mm-hmm. point I'm making is that just um, showing the, an interest why not being au fait with the, with the technicalities of the subject, mm-hmm. that also makes a difference. So let us say the, the child comes, and I'll u- use this example that occurred just uh, this week with my own child. He, well, obviously, he's, a, he's at uh, first form now. And he was doing uh, an art piece for his assignment. Mm-hmm. No, I cannot draw to save my life. I will tell you no. And I know most parents are like that because in our culture, we don't really teach Value. children to draw either. Yeah. Persons who go, go into art essentially mm-hmm. have what we call the gift of being able to draw. Mm-hmm. So he was doing this art project. And again, I am not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. But just being, being, being present and showing the interest, when he brought the project to me, Fortunately for me, I had just watched the previous week on the on the network this guy who was teaching people to draw <laughs> and he was doing painting. So when, so when, when, when I sat there, in fact, my, my, my daughter was was giving me pressure that here I am watching a program about teaching people to draw. Uh-huh. He was he was using um, a, a palette knife and so on. Yeah. And when I sat and saw how easily he explained all the steps, so I, I, I was amazed. And then because of that, when my son came over the project, I could say, but you know, you need to have some depth in this, 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 in this painting. So therefore, I was able to, to show an interest because yeah. having been exposed, if yeah. I even know, I just, it just was yeah. on, the, on the network. And I, I was just interested in it. I said, oh, this is interesting. Uh-huh. Not knowing that weeks later, yeah. that same information will come in handy yes. by showing an interest in what he was doing for his right. project. Yes. So it is things like that that mm-hmm. you will have to do to my mind yeah. to let your child know that whatever you are doing, even if I'm not the expert in the area, mm-hmm. I am interested in what you are doing. Well, it is important good, to me. That's a good point, though, Marshall, though, because, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you may not be the expert, mm-hmm. but you may have read the book. Correct. <laughs> also, the, the, the child is doing the pearl at school. Mm-hmm. You, you read, you read the pearl, and mm-hmm. you, you, you know, it's just giant, but you read the pearl. Mm-hmm. And you, ask the child, you, you, you can converse with that child yes. on yep. the book. Correct. You know, um, tell, and, tell me the story. Yeah, Share with me. You know, Correct. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so, so to me, to me, that's a, that's a very solid point, Emma yeah. Farley. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, to get an interest, mm-hmm. but going beyond and trying to understand some of the work, so you can converse with that child mm-hmm. in a meaningful way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that um, one one of the issues. Sometimes some parents may have an interest, but sometimes the, especially with a single parent, mm-hmm. uh, you may have an issue with time. Mm-hmm. How do you manage that time? Mm-hmm. Well, not only single parent, but how do you manage that time? Mm-hmm. Have an interest, but how do you, how, how are you able to navigate mm-hmm. um, that time? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, that limited time you may have. Mm-hmm. What, what, you, what would you say to that? Well, that, that it's interesting that you, you, you brought up that point because we, we did some research on parental involvement and student academic achievement. Mm-hmm. And essentially what the research showed is that even the, the, the most important thing mm-hmm. was time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the okay. research showed that even where there were cases, and this, this research was done at, at schools where you had high levels of parental in, involvement. But the, okay. the main thing that came out and emerged from the, from the research mm-hmm. was that there was a challenge with time. Yes. Okay. And the parents basically said, well, even though I want to be there for my yes. child or my or the or ward, mm-hmm. the problem is because of my work commitments, etc. Mm-hmm. the time, the time is, 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 not, um, is not available. Mm-hmm. And, and the way to address that really and truly is is on a case by case basis. Okay. Because fundamentally if, if you regard if you understand first of all, 
that you you're being present are you showing an interest are you just being there mm -hmm. is critical to your child's development yeah. then it is incumbent on you as the parent or the ward mm -hmm. to find the time because they maintain that <laughs> we find the time for what we deem to be important that's true and that's the fundamental point yeah. if i want to go to the gym mm -hmm. i will organize my schedule so that i get to the gym yeah. If I want to, to watch a, 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 a video on television or whatever, mm -hmm. I will organize my schedule so that I'm able to do it. Yeah. So even though persons have research suggests that time is the, the most critical thing, mm -hmm. the point I'm making is that if you understand that making the time for your child it's is critical. important mm -hmm. and it's critical, mm -hmm. then you will adjust and do what you have to. I'm not saying you have to spend four hours every week or six hours. There's no prescriptive approach, really. Yes. It is just that you say, oh, you, you understand that, okay, this is important to my child, so I'm going to do it. Yes. And, and fundamentally, it is, is incumbent on the parent or the guardian mm -hmm. to say, you know what, this is what I want to do. Yes. I will make the time. If it's sufficiently important to you, yes. you will make the time. Yes. So we can't give a prescription yes. because <laughs> we don't know a person's schedules. Yes. We don't know if they work two jobs to make ends meet. We yes. don't know. Yes. But even, even just making the time to say, okay, I know this is important for you, I can give you 10 minutes. Yes. I can give you five minutes. Mm -hmm. And in accounting, we talk about cutting the fat out of the, out of the budget, which means that as, as, as broke as you feel you are, <laughs> when you look at your budget, there are ways you will look into that budget and you will say, you know what, I can save money here. Instead of buying a drink every day, I may make lemonade in the morning. Mm -hmm. Instead of catching the bus on the evenings, I may walk a part of the way. So in other words, there are things that you are always able to, to remove from your budget yeah. when you are trying to, to achieve a financial Instead goal. Instead of buying lunch every day. Precisely. So the same principle <laughs> applies. Yes. If, you, if you recognize that time, it is critical for me to spend time with my child, mm -hmm. then you will look at your, quote unquote, your time budget. Yeah and you will seek to cut the fat out of that budget. Mm -hmm. And wherever they, they, they are cases where you can ease out some time here, let's say five minutes here, 10 minutes there, it all adds up. Yes. And, and just being, as you say, providing that time, you don't know what that will do for that child. Yes. Yes. Just showing, because yes. they, they understand, mm -hmm. they, the, the children will be acutely aware that you are very, very busy. Yes. But when you say, well, look, even though I am busy, I'll make the time. I'll make the time to get, I can, can't give you a, an hour, I can give you 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you 10 Monday, 10 minutes Monday, I can give you 10 minutes on Friday, yeah. but you're saying, I am prepared to give you Maybe whatever I, I am able to afford at the given mm -hmm. time. So, so, so I think mean, I mean the issue, though, that the Marsh is raising, though, is, is to underscore mm -hmm. the importance of time. So, yes. in the same way, you want to give your child maybe a good financial future correct and that's important so you work hard mm -hmm. then it is also critical mm -hmm. to spend time, time. and therefore mm -hmm. you must see those things you know in tandem as being yes. as being excellent yes. equal. Yes. i like that's the idea good. of making the time mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and of course and you know what you're investing mm -hmm. in that child's life correct and you know inherently the child sees that kind of an interest and as mm -hmm. you said the child is aware Mm. of how busy you are. Of mm. course, it's incumbent also on the child, mm -hmm. depending on the age, but it's mm -hmm. also incumbent on them to work along with that adjustment. Mm -hmm. Adjustment, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, that they can cooperate mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah, definitely. All right, viewers, we have a discussion here about partnering with parents and teachers to, of course, the whole idea of achieving student success. And um, we'll be back with you in a moment as we dig a little deeper. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, we're back with you, and I trust you are indeed enjoying uh, the program. Uh, much food for thought. And uh, Marshall has shared with us um, three very important elements, uh, presence, uh, interest, and time. Uh, what are some of the other uh, key elements that we ought to look at as, as peers? Thank you, Reverend Kelman. And I have two others. Uh, and the first one is providing what we call an enabling environment. Now, what do I mean by an enabling environment? It is as simple as providing a quiet space for a child to do his or her homework. And this might seem very, very insignificant, but let, let us, I'll give you a scenario. Let us say for argument's sake, you are in a home and you have four children. There are four children, they are all school age children, and they all have homework to be completed. So imagine you are coming, to, coming home 
and when you get home, the TV is blaring, the radio is blaring, <laughs> and every every manner of, of possible distraction is there. Mm -hmm. Something as basic as finding a quiet space can be so critical in, in allowing that child to be able to complete that homework properly. And it might see, as I said, it may seem insignificant, but that is the reality in some homes. Mm -hmm. There are some homes where, because of the sheer uh, number of persons who live in the home, you can't even find a quiet space to read. You cannot find a quiet space to, to do your homework because you are competing with your siblings, first of all, and then you may also be competing with the adults in the home who may be using the spaces for other reasons. So, so it's something that's providing a quiet space. I know there are some persons who actually will say, well, sometimes I have to go into the yard to be able to do my work because that represents a quiet space. And it might, seems, it might seem to you to be, uh, what shall I say, that in every way, see me, how, how, how could this be happening in Barbados? But these are things that happen where the children don't even have quiet spaces because the, the parents assume that once they come home, school is over, so therefore they are at home. Mm -hmm. But you cannot um, study in an environment of chaos or noise. Mm -hmm. So just having a quiet space, just having an area you can go and sit down and do my homework, as basic as that might seem, that is critical. Mm -hmm. So creating what they call the enabling environment and what they call finding quiet space for your children. You may, you may have to schedule the quiet spaces. So you say, okay, if there are four children, but you can use this table uh, first, then the next person comes in and, and does his or her work. So it is something as quite simple and as basic as that, but it can um, yield tremendous dividends for it, the it child. It doesn't mean that you have to have a big house. No, no, definitely yeah. not. Let me ask this question though. What about those children who, who say to you that they study best with? Uh, noise. With noise and, and, and some of them, you see, they have headphones on and studying. I mean, I, that, that, that was never my, my reality though. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's a different type of, of, of scenario there because what you, they, they are not challenged by having space. They have space and the fact that they are able to use their headphones, it says they already have a space. What we're talking about is a situation where there is no space at all. Yes. Where, where they don't have even a table, a desk, a chair. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything at all. Mm -hmm. No space just for basic work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you have headphones and so on, chances are you will not have a challenge with space because mm -hmm. you have already addressed the space constraint. Mm -hmm. The issue is for those persons who do not have any space whatsoever. And I'm saying with the very, the, the, the everyday run of life when you get home, you, there's no space to basically sit down and find quiet time because they're watching TV 24-7. You know the way how it is on the networks. You can watch TV from morning till night, That's 24 true. hours straight. That's so imagine true. I'm coming home as a young child, you have an assignment due tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to do my work, but the TV is blaring. Mm -hmm. Imagine the impact on me being able to concentrate. Yeah. Focus. And focus. That has to be a kind of cooperation in terms of the members of the household. Correct. And, yes. and, and again, they must understand that a child needs a quiet space. And I'll give you one example of, of, of what I'm talking about. There was a case where the parent, the child came home to do the work, and, but this is not really space, but still enabling the environment. And the parent said, well, you, you can't be using the, the light now because the electricity bill is too high. Mm -hmm. So when okay. the child was trying to do the work, the yes. child, it was like, the, the reality was that the parent was concerned, and understandably so, mm -hmm. about the, the light bill being too high. Yes. So they had to turn off the light because so the child was unable to do the work into the night. And these are realities out there. Yeah. It might seem as if we are developed and these things don't happen, but mm -hmm. the reality is that there are some people, even in this context, turn who off have, the light. have to turn off the light yeah. just yeah, to save money. Especially knowing that you can't okay, so right. right. So right. that's not how to navigate. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and again, if you, if you, even though the parent may understand cognitively well, the child needs to have the light to, to do his or her homework. The child is also constrained by, okay, can they afford to pay the light bill when it comes in next month? Yes. Right. Something as basic as that. Because, yeah. because you, might, you might do the work in the night now, uh -huh. but I have no light at all next month. Precisely. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so there has to be some balance, uh, yeah. discussion, negotiation, yeah. Yeah. understanding. Yeah. And, and the second one I will leave with you is, is as it relates to um, establishing a relationship with your with your children or your or your child or ward mm -hmm. that is critical mm -hmm. because um, student success is predicated essentially on having relationships all the time whether it's relationship with the parent relationship with the teacher relationship with the, with the peers mm -hmm. so if you establish a good relationship with your child the child record will, will, will be motivated to do his or her best because you have a relationship. You, you, if, if you think back about your own days at school, the, the teachers for whom you did the best work, 
would have been the yeah. ones with whom you had a good rapport or a good relationship. That's right. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ones that you could not stand, did you work for them? Not necessarily. <laughs> you might work for them to get rid of them so you don't have to see them again. <laughs> but the ones with whom you had a good relationship, yes. those are the ones that will motivate you mm -hmm. to do even better than you think you can do. And the same thing applies in terms of the parents, mm -hmm. where the parents, once you have that relationship with your child, mm -hmm. that, 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 again, that pays dividends, mm -hmm. just having the relationship. And I think, too, that relationship allows the child Mm -hmm. If there's an issue mm -hmm. at school, for example, if yes. they have an issue, they can come and say, well, mommy or daddy, I'm having a problem here. Correct. You know, it allows the child also to, the parent, because of a relationship, the parent is able to affirm the child. Correct. See the need to affirm. If, they, if a child needs some help, mm -hmm. the parent is able to find help or find mm -hmm. out where the problems are Excellent. in the early. Yep. So I, 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 that's a beautiful point. Mm -hmm. A meaningful relationship. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that, though. Yes. Um, as a guidance counselor many years ago, I, I always thought that um, education was, was tripartite, you know, it was mm -hmm. the, the, the student, mm -hmm. the teacher, and the parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once we got that, that mixture correct, yeah. mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. uh, everyone took the benefit. Yeah. Well, time has gone so fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Dr. Marshall, so you've given us some really food for thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we, as we round this off, I'm giving a final word, a minute also, and then we'll uh, serve the Kelman to pray for us. Okay. So final word. Um, but my final word would be to encourage all parents to, to basically recognize that children are gifts. That's right. And if they are gifts, then you as parents, you, you become stewards, stewards really, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to make a good account of your stewardship. Mm -hmm. So as I said, th there are cost effective ways in which yes. you can be there for your children. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you have to be rich. It does not mean you have to be um, well endowed with wealth and so on. Mm -hmm. It just means that you once you recognize the importance, mm -hmm. then you put the systems in place to help your children because you are investing in them for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful wor words of wisdom. Okay, thank you. Yes. Kevin? <laughs> Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of children, and we thank God for the ability to pass on important values and critical values to those children. But we give you thanks as well for our school system, for teachers who day and day out labor to ensure that our children have the best start in life academically. And Lord, we pray today for your continued blessings and direction. Pray for your wisdom, Lord, you see to engage. And Father, I pray, God, even now that you will always remember that, as the presenter said, children are a gift, and therefore, let's manage them well as teachers and as parents. In Jesus' name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen. And I want to leave with you this verse from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Education is critical. And as parents, do the best you can to help your children. God bless you.